This is Dr. Artie Kavanaugh from RWCS 2017. It's been a very good meeting, and one of the real thrills and really good educational aspects has been the presentations by the fellows. We have a number of really good abstracts, and we're going to review one of those now. Hello, Artie. I'm Emily Pfeiffer. I'm one of the second year fellows from the University of Colorado. Hi, Denver. And um, I'll just go through the case really quick. So this was a very interesting case that I had as the first year last year of a 58-year-old gentleman who came into the VA down in Denver for really significant pain all over. He said he was actually admitted for a psych diagnosis of suicidal ideation. So it was an interesting situation in that we had him sort of captive in the hospital for three months. And so we got to monitor him very closely. Um, after we started treating him for what turned out to be psoriatic arthritis. So he had lots of inflamed joints, psoriasis all over, which was why he was having so much pain. So it was nice in that because his suicidal ideation was related to something more than just um, a psychiatric disorder, it was related to something that we as rheumatologists can actually treat. So he had really great sacroiliitis on his imaging for us to see, not for him. And um, he was very inflamed when we met him, uh, but the rest of his laboratory workup was pretty much normal. The other interesting twist in his story was that he had hepatitis C, which limited what we could do as far as treatment for him. And so we ended up giving him a Tanercept and some high-dose steroids just because he was so inflamed, even with the risk of uh, making his psoriasis worse. And he did really, really well. Um, the inflammation in his joints and his skin, everything got better. But then as he was an inpatient, the nurses on the psych service noted that his blood sugar started to drop very significantly. Um, down into the 30s and 40s, he was very symptomatic. And so we took off all of the insulin he was on. He was on long and, acti and short acting and then was on metformin as well. And we were able to get him off of all of them. And he was still having hypoglycemic episodes. And they actually seemed to correlate with when he got his doses of a Tanercept. So we were actually able to watch that as he was an inpatient. Our endocrinology colleagues helped us do a full workup for other causes of um, hypoglycemia. He had normal insulin levels, no insulin antibodies, normal C-peptide. Um, he was eating normally. Liver function was normal. There wasn't anything to explain it except his Enbrel was the only thing that we had added to him. And so um, just a very brief literature review you, there are some case reports in case series of TNF inhibitors causing similar hypoglycemic episodes more. Nobody was quite as severe as this gentleman. Um, but this has been reported and the hypothesis for why this works is the tumor necrosis factor is doing more than just the inflammation in the joints and the skin that we as rheumatologists think about. It can cause um, insulin resistance and it can promote um, beta cell apoptosis in the pancreas, and so their sugars are just um, a lot harder to control when they're so inflamed. And so there are a handful of case reports of other uh, medications that we use doing the same thing, and so I don't think it's specific to a Tanercept, but um, it is something interesting to think about and something to keep in mind when we're starting these patients on these medications. I think he is a, a a severe kind of example of what can happen, but just something very interesting uh, to keep in mind. All right, well, thank you. Great presentation, a very interesting case. Just reminds us we need to be broad-minded about safety issues. This is Dr. Artie Kavanaugh from RWCS 2017.